Hi everybody, it's Miss Crystal Bull with Science, Properties and Material, Chapter 2, Lesson 3, Cause and Effect. Here's our Chapter 2 question. Can heating a substance and returning it to its original temperature make a better, stickier glue? Remember, this is the question that we'll be trying to answer throughout the chapter. Here's our first activity. We will be introduced to cause and effect. So when one thing causes another thing to happen, that's cause and effect. So the first thing that causes it and the result is the effect. So engineers who design mixtures look at what happens when they mix things and why. One way to do that is to look at cause and effect. So let's look at this from one of our pages in our books. Cause and effect. Cinnamon adds a spicy smell and flavor to a mixture. That means the cause is adding cinnamon. The effect or the result is that it adds a spicy smell and flavor. Here's the next one. Cinnamon covers up smells from other ingredients. Again, the cause is adding cinnamon. And the effect or the result is that it covers up smells from other ingredients. We can see cause and effect relationships every day. Let's think of some examples. Here is my first example. The cause. I kicked the ball. The effect, we rolled across the grass. What are some examples of cause and effect relationships from your life at home? Here are some sentence starters that you could use. Blank, because blank, when I blank, blank. So I'm gonna give you some time to get some paper, to pause the video, think about examples of cause and effect from your life, and I will share my ideas next. I hope you got to write down some cause and effect relationships from your life. Here are mine. The grass is wet because it rained last night. When I wake up early, I get more things done for my day. We'll write cause and effect statements for some ingredients in our table. We'll have two different causes. Here you go. When we added salt to our mixture, do you remember the result or the effect of that? The mixture is grainy, not sticky. The evidence, only eight of the beans stuck during our sticky test. Here's another example. When we added cornstarch and it was heated, that was the cause, here's the effect. It made the mixture stickier. What was our evidence? All 10 beans stuck. Now I'm wondering, why do you think it might be helpful for engineers to understand cause and effect relationships when they are designing something? Go ahead and pause the video, think about this question, jot down your idea, and I will share mine next. I hope you were able to jot down your idea. Here's mine. Cause and effect can help engineers know what ingredients can cause a mixture to be a certain way either the way we want it to be or not the way we want it to be. The next activity of our lesson is we're going to look at cause and effect in our reference book. We need to learn more about ingredients so that our next glue mixture can be even better at meeting the design goal. We'll add corn syrup and gelatin to our list of ingredients. We observed heated cornstarch and water in the last lesson, but we haven't yet observed gelatin or corn syrup. You can find evidence about stickiness in the reference book's cause and effect sections. Engineers use reference books to learn about substances. So we're going to look at this book, Handbook of Interesting Ingredients. I'll turn to page 34 in the Handbook of Interesting Ingredients. Let's look for evidence about flour. So this is the index of our book. And do you see what pages flour can be found in? That's right pages 18 and 19. So here we turn to page 19 and it has the cause and effect section. I'm gonna read it out loud. Cause and effect. Flour makes a mixture sticky. Flour makes a mixture thick. Flour makes a mixture hard when dry. So let's think about this question next. Of the three cause and effect statements, which one gives us evidence about the flower stickiness? I 
think it's the first one. Flour makes a mixture sticky. Now we're going to turn to this page in our packet. You'll track your evidence here just like engineers do. I'll write an example and review the directions. So this worksheet says, gathering evidence from the handbook of interesting ingredients. Here are the directions. Number one, look through the book and find evidence of the stickiness of each ingredient in the table. Number two, record the evidence in the table. Number three, choose another ingredient from the book. And lastly, add it to the table and record evidence about its stickiness. Here are the ingredients, cornstarch, gelatin, corn syrup, flour, and the last one is blank for you so that you could choose one that you want to read about. I wrote about flour, and here's my evidence about its stickiness. Flour makes a mixture sticky. So I'm going to give you some time to pause the video and complete this page in your packet. Have some time to complete this page in your packet and wrote about evidence about stickiness. Are you ready to move on? Next, we will discuss our evidence. Let's review what you wrote in the table on this page. I want to know, if I, add, if I add cornstarch to a mixture, what is the effect on the mixture? And what is the cause of that effect? Remember, we're learning about cause and effect today. Here's what I'm thinking. The effect, it might get stickier. And the cause is adding cornstarch. Let's learn more about the properties of gelatin as we think about whether it might be a good ingredient for our glue. Here are the important properties of gelatin. Gelatin has no smell and almost no flavor by itself. When a mixture of gelatin and water cools, it, get, it gels. That means it becomes slippery solid. Remember, gelatin and corn syrup are two new ingredients that we're going to learn about. Here's a, what I read. When a mixture of gelatin and water cools, it gels. That means it becomes a slippery solid. So if I'm not sure what solid means, I can always look it up in the glossary. So here is a page of the glossary. A glossary tells us what the important words are in the book and its definition. I'll find the word solid in the glossary and read its definition. The definition tells me what the word means. So here's solid, something that holds its shape and doesn't make puddles like rock or wood. Scientists and engineers are interested in cause and effect because it helps explain what happens in the natural world. When we create glue recipes, we also need to consider cause and effect because we want to know what to do to get certain results or cause certain effects. This next activity of our lesson, we will review the key concept of our chapter. Remember, we're going back to this chapter two question. Can heating a substance and returning it to its original temperature make a better glue? Let's go back to our design cycle. When we tested our first glues, some of us needed to make some changes to meet the design goal of being sticky. Now we're back to the learn phase. Some substances have different properties after heating or cooling. Here are my wondering so far. What glue ingredient did we observe that had been mixed with water and heated? What were the properties of the cornstarch and water mixture before heating and after heating? So now you're going to get some time to pause the video and think about these questions, jot down your ideas, and I will share my ideas next. We are able to jot down some of your ideas, and here are mine and what I wrote down. We observed cornstarch, and before heating, here were the properties. It was runny white, smooth, and thick. After heating it, it was thick, sticky, hard to spread, and chunky. I'm wondering next if you also wrote down these same properties or different properties that we can add on. My next questions are, is the heated cornstarch mixture a different substance from the unheated cornstarch mixture? And why do you think that? What is your evidence? So here's our pause button again. Go ahead and pause your video. Think about these questions. Jot down your ideas and I will share mine next. Here are my ideas. Yes, it is a different substance because the properties are different. That's a key concept that we are coming to. 
If the substance doesn't change back to the way it was, it has become a different substance. Next, we want to talk about how we read about how jelly beans are made. At first, the mixture is pourable and soft, but it hardens and gets chewy when it cools. It becomes a new substance. The last part of our lesson is we will do an evidence thought swap. So if you remember this from a couple of lessons back, I will ask some questions. You get to pause the video, jot down your answer, and then I'll share my ideas next. Are you ready? We learned that heating a cornstarch and water mixture makes a new substance because it changes the properties. Our design goal is to make a sticky glue. We'll do a thought swap to discuss whether we would want to heat a glue made of cornstarch and water. Here's our first question. Remember that our design goal is making the stickiest glue possible. If our glue is made of cornstarch and water, should we heat it? Go ahead and pause the video. Think about this question. Jot down your answer and I will share my ideas next. Here's my idea. Yes, because from what we observed, it makes a sticky glue. Are you ready for our next question? Here we go. I want you to think about this question silently. Think about all the evidence you could share to support your claim. The observations you made of the cornstarch and water mixtures, the sticky test results, and what you read in the handbook of interesting ingredients. Go ahead and pause your video. Think about all these things, your observations of the cornstarch and water, the sticky test results, and what you read. That gives us our next question. Will heating the cornstarch and water make the glue stickier? How do you know? What is your evidence? Let's pause the video, think about this question, answer it, and I will share mine next. I hope you got to jot down your answer to this question. Here's my idea. Yes, heating the cornstarch and water will make the glue stickier. We know this from our sticky test. All 10 beans stuck on the We made observations, did tests, and recorded our results and got information from a book. When scientists and engineers get information from different places, they're gathering evidence from different sources. Using evidence from different sources helps convince people that a claim is correct. To the end of our lesson, we thought about different questions from our book. We read about gelatin, we read about cause and effect, and we read about different ingredients and the evidence of it being sticky. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.